The objectives for this module are to demonstrate the proper grasp, fulcrum, adaptation, and stroke on the tooth, and to perform disinfection prior to sterilization procedures. When applying the tip, the wrench should be the moving part and the handpiece would be stationary. So it would look like this. By doing so, you avoid twisting lines inside the handpiece cable. To prevent occupational exposure, keep the wrench on the tip when not in use. There are two grasps that are utilized in ultrasonic scaling. You can use the modified pen grasp or the pen grasp. The most important thing is that there's space between the pointer and the thumb on the handle so that you can roll around the line angles. In addition, if you'd like, you can tuck the cord between the ring finger and the pinky finger. There are two types of fulcrums, one intraoral, the other extraoral. With hand instrumentation, it's advised to use intraoral fulcrums. However, with ultrasonic scaling, because of the light grasp on the handpiece, you can use either intraoral or extraoral fulcrums. You do want to use the lateral sides on the piezo, like a universal curette or a sickle, where there are two sides, two lateral surfaces that are used, and you would not be using the back of the instrument. Likewise, with a piezo, you would not be using the back of the piezo tip. The tip is active on the lower two thirds, or lower two millimeters, rather, of the tip and this area should be held against the tooth. Let's look at an instrumentation technique in a simulated uh, model. So if you draw a dime, a circle about the size of a dime, and then you wanna color in the dime as if you were scaling. And then let's look and compare and contrast the two different techniques here. So in the first technique, it's rather random, kind of just all over the place. There's really no pattern and there are spaces in between. This would not be very effective if you were performing your ultrasonic scaling like that. However, what's recommended is that you use vertical strokes. You can use also horizontal strokes. And you can use oblique strokes, but note that the strokes are very much overlapping in the area and that's what you should do when you're doing your ultrasonic technique. The adaptation of the tip to the tooth should be tilted at zero to five degrees. If it's more than five degrees, then you will hear a built-in auditory cue of a very high pitched sound. So that is your cue to close your angle to zero to five degrees. For those who have learned on magneto first, they tend to use a 15 degree tilt on the tooth. So it's very easy to listen for the auditory cue and if you hear a high pitched sound, and that just means that you need to close the angle against the tooth. The pressure when scaling should be about the same pressure as using a periodontal probe, which would be 20 grams of pressure. The tip placement can be pointed apically, or the back of the tip can be transverse, working to the bottom of the pocket. With ultrasonic scaling, you're working from coronal to apical, which is different from hand instrumentation because with hand instruments, we need to get past the calculus, go to the base of the pocket, then engage in our activation stroke and come up. With ultrasonic instrumentation, you're working coronally to apically. At the end of the procedure, the student action requires disinfection prior to sterilization. Let's take a look at what this looks like. You'll wipe visible debris from the handpiece and the tip with a cavity wipe. You'll remove the tip with the wrench, turning the wrench, not the handpiece. Place the wrench with the tip in the plastic box. Take the tip off the cable. Place the handpiece in the plastic box and put the lid on the box. This concludes the third module of piezo scaling with Neutron.